I love the light, our sun. It's amazing the way it affects our skies and clouds. Hey there, Space Cats, how the dickens are you doing? I'm Tickety Boo, thanks for asking. This week, I am whipping out the old watercolour paint set and creating two different skies. Skies are quite important to have a go at, mainly because they create a great backdrop for other things to happen around. But they also create atmosphere and setting and can tell you so much about the weather and the time of year. Some of my favourite books entail a big storm because it's so easy to conjure up the moodiness in your mind. So let's conjure it up on paper and see what happens. I've got a selection of brushes including a big flat one for putting some water down on my paper and my tin of paint. I've got a big pot of water and some kitchen roll. First job is to wet the paper. I'm now going to mix up some yellow. So I'm going to take the cadmium and a little bit of the bright yellow. Plenty of water. A little bit of ochre. Then a bit of very dark blue. <clears throat> Some purple. Bit of magenta. Back to the dark. Okay, I'm going to swap brushes. I'm going to swap to this one. Get rid of this. I've got this this um, bow in the in the paper here, so that's one of the reasons why it's quite good to stretch your paper first. But I didn't do that with this, so I'm just going to even that out a bit. Bit of Van Dyke brown. So this is mainly out of my head. Just change the angle slightly so it's a bit easier to see. Just going to remove a bit of that. So I'm going to come back in here with a bit of ochre because I want to think about. Um, making this into thirds so there's a third one third here one third here or one third here one third here
in this method it's given a little bit of splatter in the middle here but I think that's all right actually because uh, that's gonna blend in quite nicely this is just a wet brush Okay, I'm going to leave that to dry now. Okay, it's dry now. I've changed the angle a bit because um, the light from above is creating quite a lot of reflection. So hopefully you can see this okay. But that is now dry. I'm just going to dry the puddles at the edge up a little bit. I used a hair dryer to dry it, so it should be okay. I'm going to take this brush again and wet it and I'm going to wet the paper again Kadoki. now I particularly like this area so I'm not going to do too much up there there is still this kind of band down the middle which is a bit I'm going to go with it because it's kind of like reminds me a bit of um, like maybe a tornado or something approaching so I'm going to go in with my very dark colours this time and back to the round brush again I'll just quite it's quite wet this this pigment just a little bit up there mostly Van Dyke brown with a, li oh, a little bit of the French ultramarine is ochre And I've got a Payne's Grey, which I don't use very much. I'm going to try that over here. It's quite sort of silvery actually.
and get rid of those harsh lines. So you want it to be quite blurry if possible. It really does start to look like a very stormy sky approaching. So it's a combination of putting down a bit of pigment and then going in with a wet brush and just softening it all up. This corner down here to be really dark. The gathering storm. And then maybe just a little bit of blue peeking through over here. Memory of the sunny day that it was. Okay, I'm going to leave that to dry now. I feel like there's too much of this purpley colour in it, so I'm going to use my spray bottle just to wet it a bit. In, um, I think, up maybe in this sort of area. I'm going to shield the rest with my hand. And then I'm going to drop in some of that darker grey. Just so that it looks like a bit of a storm cloud coming in from the side here. Just to lose a little bit of that purpliness. A little bit of sepia. Perfect. I love the way that has now swooped down into there. So I'm going to dry it a little bit and then we'll have another look at it. So looking at it from bottom to top, I really like this bottom left hand corner because it does look like um, a storm cloud coming in from beneath and then meeting the one that's up the top up there. And this one I like in particular because it really does look like there's some rain swooping out of that cloud, the underneath of that cloud, and beginning to fall. And then in the middle, you've got these remnants of a beautiful day as you get these big old clouds coming in and bringing the rain and the wind with it. For the second one you're only really going to need one colour and that's blue with lots of different shades and I'm using this round brush, round ended brush but it's very narrow to start with and I'm just going to pick up some water, clean water and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use negative space so I'm thinking about cloud, white fluffy clouds but I'm not going to wet where I want the white fluffy clouds to be. So again, you're going to need to look slightly sideways onto your paper to see where you've wet it. I'm going to do one cloud here and one cloud here. swapping to this slightly narrower brush and it's the same thickness all the way around it's a tapered one and I'm going to use some of the and then I'm just going to shape my clouds so there's one cloud here
and then there's another one here at the bottom. So I'm thinking I'm channeling a beautiful sunny day with just big fluffy clouds. Nice warm early summer. So the sky's looking crystal clear. And just a wet brush to start to smooth some of those blobs out. So it's nice to get some harsh edges and some very soft blurred edges. Like there's a blurred edge here. Nice clean my paper gone. Kitchen paper. Blur some of those edges. And then the same down here. I'm going to leave this this area here is making quite a nice texture on the paper because it's quite smooth paper but it's giving the appearance a little bit of rough there must be just a little bit more cotton in the mix there for that bit so I'm going to leave that as it is what I am going to do is just soften this edge over here just a wee bit So sometimes it's about removing paint as well as adding. Okay, so I'm going to leave this to dry and then I'm going to think about the contours and the textures of the actual clouds themselves. Fully dry, I've swapped brushes for a number 8 Pro Art. I've mixed together some Payne's Grey. French ultramarine and the blue, the pale blue that I was using, or the bright blue. And now what I'm going to do is think about the underside, the, the shadow is often on the underside of the cloud um, because you've got the light source coming from above from the sun or sometimes from behind. So I'm just going to go in and sort of, that's a bit too dark, let's pick some of that up. You really only need a tiny, tiny amount and just kind of pick up some of those shadows that are showing underneath the cloud. And the same over here to show its form. And 
and this is just a wet brush. So a lot of this you're leaving white so that's letting the paper do the job of highlights for you. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it at that. It's pretty straightforward. She says doing a bit more. It's going to blend that a little bit. Okay, I am going to leave it like that. If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. There are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens, among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. And that covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, as well as several tutorials on illustrating your book, and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go! Fooey! I enjoyed that very much. And now it's your go. See what happens when you let the paint do some of the work for you and try not to be too regimented. Watercolour is like a rebellious teenager. If you try to restrict it, it will go off in a huff. Next week, I will be making another magical picture, this time a fairy. I love all things magical, so long as it's good magic. I'm off to practice balancing on my toadstool. I will see you next week. Nanu nanu.